Dear students, now we are going to discuss Hartley Oscillator and its operation in detail. Hartley Oscillator is a type of LC oscillator which uses two inductors and one capacitor in its feedback network. So next construction of Hartley Oscillator. It has two stages, amplifier stage, feedback stage. The amplifier uses an active device that is a transistor in common emitter configuration. The common emitter configuration produces 180 degree phase shift between the input and output. R1, R2 and RE, these resistors are used to provide the proper DC bias to this transistor. Okay, there are coupling capacitors CC1 and CC2 at the input side and output side. So, this is that amplifier circuit using transistor. So, the next one is feedback network. It consists of two inductors L1 and L2 and one capacitor. This feedback network determines the frequency of oscillation. Okay. So, next we are going to analyze the operation. So, here when the supply voltage is given to this amplifier, the capacitor starts charging. So, when the capacitor is fully charged, it starts to discharge through this L1 and L2. So, here we have to consider these three terminals, terminal 1, 2 and 3. This third terminal is grounded. That means at this point, its potential is 0. If terminal 1 is positive, then the terminal 2 becomes negative with respect to this third terminal okay so here with respect to this ground we can say if it is plus means this becomes negative if it is positive it becomes negative so here we can introduce 180 degree phase shift between the input of this feedback network and the output side do you all understand this so this feedback network introduces additional 180 degree phase shift which is required for oscillation. Do you all understand this? Here the output VO is given as input at this terminal 2. So here this voltage is available across this L2 inductor and the feedback voltage is available across the inductor L1. Do you all understand this concept? So it can produce oscillatory output. Therefore, the phase difference between the terminals 1 and 2 is 180 degree. So, this amplifier introduces 180 degree and here the feedback introduces another one 180 degree phase shift. Totally, we can have 360 degree phase shift around this loop. So, that is the required condition for oscillation. So, we have achieved 360 degree phase shift in this Hartley oscillator. That's what given here. The amplifier stage uses an active device as a transistor in common emitter configuration. R1, R2 are the biasing resistances to provide the DC bias to the transistor. Feedback network consists of two inductors, one capacitor and this will decide the frequency of oscillation. This is the overview of the operation. When the supply voltage VCC is given to the amplifier circuit, the capacitor starts charging. When the capacitor is fully charged, it starts to discharge through L1 and L2. Hence, it produces oscillations with certain frequency. In a feedback network, the portion of the output voltage appears across L2 and the feedback voltage across L1. That I told you, right? So, here the phase shift. How do we achieve the phase shift due to the feedback concept? Here the terminal 3 is grounded. That means zero potential. If terminal 1 is at positive potential and terminal 2 is at negative potential, then we can get 180 degree phase difference between terminal 1 and 2. So, in CE configuration, the transistor provides phase shift of 180 degree between input and output. Therefore, we can get the total phase shift as 360 degree. Based on the percussion criterion, we have to achieve the loop gain A beta as 1. For that, we have to adjust the values of feedback components to get A beta is equal to 1. 
So next equivalent circuit of Hotley oscillator. In this, the transistor is represented using hybrid model. Here input impedance is HIE, the output is HFE IB, the collector resistance is RC. Across that we can take that output voltage VO. In the feedback network, we have to give this output voltage to this L2. Correct? The second inductor. And we have to take the feedback voltage across this L1. This is the overall equivalent circuit. From this, we can get the simplified equivalent circuit. In this case, we have to take this output this side. So, we have to consider that feedback network here. This is actually V0 that is given as input to this feedback network across this L2. Okay. Then we can get the feedback voltage from this L1 and given as input to the amplifier. Next, we are going to derive the frequency of oscillation in Hartley oscillator. For that, we can consider the general equation for the LC oscillator. So, this is the general equation which has been already derived. This is common for any types of LC oscillator. HIE into Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 plus Z1 Z2 into 1 plus HFE plus Z1 Z3 is equal to 0. Consider this as the first equation. So, you have to remember this general equation for LC oscillators. In case of Hartley oscillator, we have to substitute the values of Z1, Z2 and Z3. Here Z1 and Z2 are inductive reactances. Z3 is capacitive reactance. So here we can mention the values like this. Z1 is equal to J omega L1. Z2 is equal to J omega L2. Z3 is equal to 1 by J omega C. So here capacitive reactance is always denoted in the denominator. So here it is 1 by J omega C. We have to substitute all these three values in this first equation. Then we can get HIE Z1 is J omega L1 plus J omega L2 plus 1 by J omega C plus Z1 Z2, right? So here J omega L1 into J omega L2 into 1 plus HFE. Here it is plus Z1 value is J omega L1, Z3 value is 1 by J omega C. That is equal to 0. So next we have to simplify this values here. So next HIE J omega L1 plus J omega L2. Here we can have J omega as a common term for this two. But here it is in the denominator. So we have to multiply the numerator and denominator with the value J omega. So here it becomes J omega divided by J squared omega squared C plus this side J squared omega squared L1 L2 into 1 plus HFE. Here J omega J omega divided. Then we can get L1 by C is equal to 0. Okay, so in the next step, we have to take this J omega as a common term from this bracket. We can get HIE J omega into L1 plus L2 minus this 1 by J squared. So 1 by J squared means it is minus 1. J squared is always minus 1, right? So we can say minus 1 by omega squared C minus here J squared is nothing but minus 1. So minus omega squared L1 L2 into 1 plus HFE plus L1 by C that is equal to 0. So now we have obtained the, the general equation for Hartley oscillator. So here it is having real part and imaginary part. So this is what the real terms okay which is not having any J term. So the J term is known as imaginary part okay. We can simply rewrite the above equation as L1 by C minus omega squared L1 L2 into 1 plus HFE that is the real term plus imaginary term J omega HIE L1 plus L2 minus 1 by omega squared C that is equal to 0. Consider this as the second equation. So this is the general equation of Hartley oscillator. We have derived this general equation especially for this Hartley oscillator. Next, we are going to find out the frequency of oscillation. So, here we know that at resonant frequency condition. So, at resonant frequency condition, the reactance values both are equal. That is XL is equal to XC. 
so if you want to find out the frequency of oscillation frequency of oscillation is nothing but resonant frequency so at this frequency the reactances can be cancel each other to give the imaginary part as zero so in order to determine the frequency of oscillation at resonant condition the imaginary part of this second equation is equal to zero so what is the imaginary value omega hie l1 plus l2 minus 1 by omega squared c we can take that value and make it as equal to zero then we have to move this omega hie to this side as a denominator zero divided by anything becomes zero correct then we can have l1 plus l2 minus 1 by omega squared c is equal to zero then we have to move this 1 by omega squared c to this side as a plus 1 so we can get l1 plus l2 is equal to 1 by omega squared c then we have to move this omega squared c to this side as a numerator and move this l1 plus l2 to this side as a denominator because we are going to find out the value of frequency okay so omega squared c is equal to 1 by l1 plus l2 then we have to move this c to this side as a denominator then we can get omega squared is equal to 1 by c into l1 plus l2 consider this as the third equation because we are going to use this equation in the next derivation part okay so omega squared is equal to what 1 by c into l1 plus l2 then we have to take the square root on both sides we can get omega is equal to 1 by square root of c into l1 plus l2 here omega is nothing but 2 pi f so from this we can get this f value by moving this 2 pi to this side as a denominator value we can get the frequency of oscillation for Hartley oscillator is f is equal to 1 by 2 pi square root of c into l equivalent l equivalent is nothing but what l1 plus l2 so this is very important formula we are going to use this formulas to solve some problems in the next video lecture okay next we are going to derive the condition for oscillation in Hartley oscillator in order to determine the condition for oscillation the real part of the equation 2 is equated to 0 the condition for oscillation that means we are going to find out the gain okay gain of the transistor this will decide the oscillation in Hartley oscillator for this we have to consider the real part as 0 okay so here real part is what l1 by c minus omega square l1 l2 into 1 plus hfe is equal to 0 then we have to move this minus side to this side as a plus 1 so next we are going to substitute the third equation in this equation so what is the third equation that is omega square its value is 1 by c into l1 plus l2 okay this omega squared is replaced with this value and this here it is l1 l2 into 1 plus hfe okay then we can divide these two values okay on both the sides then this side becomes 1 that is equal to l2 into 1 plus hfe divided by l1 plus l2 so next step we are going to keep this 1 plus hfe here and move this term okay to this side in a reciprocal manner moving this side then we can get 1 plus hfe is equal to this l2 is common for both the terms that is l1 by l2 plus l2 by l2 so this term becomes 1 so 1 plus l1 by l2 this 1 and 1 cancel each other then we can get hfe is equal to l1 by l2 where this hfe is nothing but forward gain of the transistor okay this hfe is nothing but what forward gain of the transistor using hybrid model play oscillator for getting an oscillation the forward gain of the transistor is always greater than or equal to l1 by l2 this is also important formula to use this to solve some problems okay finally in practical case l1 and l2 are wound in a single core in case of single core it can experience the mutual inductance between l1 and l2 hence the formula of the l equivalent becomes l1 plus l2 plus 2m so here m is nothing but mutual inductance between l1 and l2 
Here the frequency of oscillation is equal to 1 by 2 pi square root of C into L1 plus L2 plus 2M. And also the forward A. HFE is equal to L1 plus M divided by L2 plus M. So we are going to use these two formulas in case of mutual inductance given in the problem. Okay.